Hi friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. And today I am so excited to share with you my new Hands On To Learn preschool curriculum. So I was inspired to start writing this curriculum because I have a two year old who actually just turned three yesterday, was his birthday, and he has Down syndrome. So I wanted to make a curriculum that I could use with him that could maybe start introducing him to formal learning concepts in a hands-on way. Now this curriculum can be used with um, children's, children that do not have any kind of disability, but I wanted to just for sure make it so that I could use it with him. And then I also have a one-year-old that's younger than him that will be able to use it next year, hopefully when he's two. And I have, I'm, I'm expecting another baby. If this is your first time to my channel, um, we are a homeschool family. I have well, I'm expecting baby number seven. We have all boys, and um, we have um, a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, a five, uh, no, he just turned a six-year-old, a four-year-old, um, my our two-year-old just turned three, and he is the one with Down syndrome. And then we have a um, one-year-old, and we are expecting another little boy in December. And so. Um, my channel is all about uh, learning. I used to be a teacher and I taught kindergarten and first grade and second grade for about 10 years before we became a homeschooling family. And so what I do now is I share with you in my videos all of the learning activities, the curriculum um, that we use and uh, things like that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this new preschool curriculum. I know many of you have already purchased it and you're excited about it and you want to see it firsthand. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. And if you're interested, I'm going to leave some links below in the um, description box where you can um, look at my, my store is called Fun Hands On Learning, where you can look at the curriculum and check it out for yourself there will be some more um, details if you look there. But let's get into it. Let me just show you what we've done. So um, this curriculum I am designing for very young preschoolers, so children ages two to three. So the preschool um, curriculum that I have done previously in all the activities have been more geared towards pre-K. So more geared towards um, three, well, late threes, early four, or late threes and four-year-olds who are um, just about to go into, you know, getting ready for kindergarten. So it's a little bit more advanced than this curriculum, which is more for the little ones. So this curriculum is designed for those young ones, two-year-olds, and three-year-olds. And so um, this is going to be a 12-week curriculum. I have it separated into three units. So the first unit. Now, each unit will have four weeks um, for a total of 12 weeks and then uh, the last two weeks are going to basically be, a, be review weeks. I have only written the first week so far so this curriculum is highly highly discounted right now it's actually um, discounted to $20 so um, that is the lowest price it will ever ever be because as I add more things to it um, the price will continue to rise. But if you purchase now at $20, you will get the entire curriculum. As I add things to it, you will get to download everything for free from here on out. But yeah, right now it is at the um, lowest price it's ever going to be because I only have one week added so far. And I'm going to show you all the activities for, the week, for week one. All right, so the first thing is there is a teacher's guide. And this is what the teacher's guide looks like. Now, I decided to put my teacher's guide in... Um, in a like I decided to bind it like this but if you do not have one of these binding machines then um, a great option would be to put it in a regular binder and so a three ring binder and so what I did is I just printed out the first page here the overview page as my cover and then I have my teacher's guide and this is unit one week one so there will be four weeks in unit one when unit one is complete and I began with just some uh, an introduction to the um, category of learning activities that you're going to see. So you're going to see instructional activities and you're going to see activity centers. The instructional activities are the ones that you do um, as the lesson for the day. And the activity centers are just an additional review or um, they're basically so that students can apply what you learned in a fun way. All right, and then um, I gave you an overview 
of in the teacher's guide of the different learning domains in this curriculum. So this curriculum is going to cover the alphabet, numbers 1 through 10, shapes, basic 2D shapes, colors, and then um, fine motor skills. And each week you will be doing all of those. It's kind of going to be like a um, rotating, circular review of all of them um, to help the students remember things. So I don't like to just teach alphabet for six weeks and then teach numbers for six weeks and then teach shape. You know, I like to rotate it so that the kids are constantly practicing the skills over and over because that's how our brains work. Our brains will retain things as they do it more than once. So I kind of rotate and, and we do all of the activities. So then I go through each of the different activities, which I'm going to go through with you today, and I talk about them and I give you a complete teacher's guide for each of the activities. So these are all the activities for the alphabet. Um, the first week is only letters A and E. And then the first week you work on, this is numbers, you work on number one. And then, this is still number one. And then for shapes, the first week you are going to work on the, uh, the shape, the circle shape. And then for colors, the first week is the color red. And then for fine motor, fine motor um, incorporates the letters, the colors, and the number of the week within the fine motor activities. And I will show you that as well. And then these, this goes through the um, a teacher's guide for the activity centers that you are going to see as I go through them. All right, so let's get going with the fun stuff. Okay guys, so what I do, if you've seen any of my other videos and my other curriculum, is I like to keep um, each unit in its own Sterilite bin, just like this. So that's what I have here is um, the activities for the first week are all in here. And up top here, I just have some of the activity centers. You can see here, and we're gonna kinda go through them. Um, and then I have a few of the uh, activities, oh, actually these are activity centers for fine motor can see here and then first we're going to go through the instructional activities so let me show you those so underneath all of those bags those bags were all of the um, activity centers those come second so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to teach the instructional activities and this week you're going to be doing the letter A so I have all of my letter A activities here you're going to be doing the letter E so A and E and you're going to be doing the number one you're going to be doing circle and the color red. Okay, so um, I also, all the fine motor activities I have attached in here with the letters. So let's say it's the first day and you're going to be instructing the letter A. So each week you will have a card that looks like this that says letter introduction and memory. So you are going to hold up the card that's this, that looks like this and you are going to practice it. So you're going to say, this is A, capital A, lowercase a. A says a ah, in apple. A says a ah, a ah, a ah. and the child will repeat um, what you're saying. Now you can also provide children some manipulatives and have them find the letter A. So here I have just in this bin here some puzzle pieces. And these puzzle pieces I love to use with little preschoolers because they're nice and chunky. These are from a Melissa and Doug chunky puzzle. What you can do is you can take your puzzle pieces out during your instruction. So after you've done the, the poster and they have repeated the, the letter A with you, you can take out some of the pieces, and I'm looking for letter A. Um, you can take out pieces and lay them out. If I can find it here. I'm gonna get E out, and that's R. Where's A? Here it is. Okay, so I want to put all of them out, but a few of them, and then kind of, you know, mix them up, and then say, okay, now I want you to look at your puzzle pieces and find the capital A. Look through there, can you do it? And then of course, hopefully they can do it and they can place it on their poster and find the correct one. If they find the incorrect one, you wanna correct them and say, nope, that's not it, let's try again. Um, we're looking for a letter that has two lines like this, two big lines and a small line across. And so hopefully they can find it and that kind of thing. So um, that is what you're gonna do to introduce. And then it also comes with a card for each of the letters. And this is just a reference card that you can put by the child as you're learning um, and as you're practicing the, the other skills. Okay, so um, each 
day when you do instruction, the children will do this. So um, they will get these cards. And um, so this is the letter A card. And you're going to have to provide your students with some manipulative. So anything that you have on hand. Now today, I decided, let's get these letters out of the way, to pull out these. These are just little cars, little plastic cars that we had from um, a, a, a learning resources activity. But um, we use them for other things too. So I decided to pull out these. Whatever you have for your preschoolers, that's what you're going to pull out. And you're going to say, okay, this is the letter A. A says, and you're going to repeat the chant. A says, a in apple. A says, a, a, a. And you're going to say, you're going to use a manipulative every time um, when you get to the circle, you're going to say the sound, say the letter, and then you're going to put one of your cars on the circle or whatever manipulative you have available. So they are going to do with their finger and they're going to say, A says, A in apple. A says, A, A, A. And then they're going to take their little manipulative and cover it up. A says, A in ant. A says, A, A, A. They're going to cover it up. They're going to do this every day. This is great fluency practice. This gets it into their memory and they won't forget it. So A says, A in X. A says, A, A, A. And now they are complete with that one. Then another activity I have here that you can do in your instruction. This is still all instruction. So you're doing it one-on-one -on -one with the child, you're sitting next to them, or if you have a whole class, you're doing it whole class, because this is the instructional part of the lesson. So you're going to say, okay, we're gonna put, their, put the mat in front of them, and you're gonna say, we're going to use um, some manipulatives, and we're gonna cover up capital A and lowercase a. So we're gonna look through all these letters, and if we can find capital A and lowercase a, we're gonna cover them all up. So the child is just going to go ahead and use their manipulative to try to cover them up. Now, another option that you can do if you have enough letters is you can go ahead and use some magnetic letters with this activity. Let me show you that one. So here I have a set of magnetic letters and I happen to have plenty of um, capital and lowercase a's. So what you wanna do is you provide them to the student and then they have to look for the capital A's and cover them up with capital A's and look for the lowercase a's and cover them up with lowercase a's. So it's just a one-to-one -one kind of correspondence to see if they can find them. And um, then you can you can also talk about some of these other letters, but they haven't learned them yet. We've only we're only practicing A, so we're really focusing in on what does a capital A look like? What does a lowercase a look like? And how do we find them? And you can do this activity again every day for that first week. These activities are for that first week and you can review, re, continually redo them. So don't feel bad if you're doing the same activity, you know, for four days or five days in a row, however long you do. I only do um, preschool with two and three year olds like two or three days a week. I do not do um, a five day a week schedule, but if you are like a teacher in a school where you do have a five day a week schedule, you can still use all of these activities for the entire week. Um, then the next activity that I have in here for, and then these activities again are all part of your instruction. So you're still instructing. You're going to say, okay, today we're going to cover up all the lowercase a's. This is a capital A and we're going to be looking for the lowercase a's. So there's there's no lowercase a in the middle here for them to look for. What they're doing is they're going to try to find the lowercase a by looking at a capital A. And again, you can provide them the magnetic letters or um, just a manipulative, whichever you have available. So I'm going to use my magnetic letters since I have enough of them. And what I would have the child do is just go ahead and cover them up as best they can. Just like so. And again, it's super simple, but remember, you're working with two and three year olds. So they are not ready for um, anything that's too intense, okay? So I made everything kind of simple, yet still fun and engaging. Okay, so there is that one. And then the next activity I have here is a letter and sound fluency. And this one, for sure, you want to do every single day of the week as they're practicing the letter A. And what they're going to do is there are dots on here. 
um, underneath the letters and then the pictures don't have dots but they can still touch with their finger. And what it says is it says, touch each box, say the letter or picture name and sound, color a smile each time you complete the whole page. So um, I will provide them with a dry erase marker since I've laminated mine. And um, what they're going to do is they're going to touch and they're going to say, A, 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 Apple, A, 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 Ant, A, A, Ant, A, A, X, A, A, and then if they do it all correct, they get to color in a smiley face. Then they can do it again, color in another one, and again, color in another one. Great for fluency, great for memory. Um, it really, even though it sounds repetitive and monotonous, it really does work. It really helps them to remember everything. So, um, so that's how they do it. If they make a mistake, you of course want to correct them right away and have them go All back right, the rest and of fix these it. activities so, that are here, these are um, instructional activities for fine motor. However, I'm attaching them to the alphabet because what I would do is when I teach it, as we do the alphabet activities, I'm going to also do the fine motor activities that go along with it um, just to keep with the theme since we're still practicing capital and lowercase a. So these two cards here are just to practice with dry erase markers up, down, across, fine motor. And these ones are just super simple. They just trace over and over again. Now, let me show you some materials you kind of want to have on hand for fine motor practice. All right, so some of the things that I like to have on hand are small little chalkboards. These ones happen to be from Handwriting Without Tears, but you can get small little chalkboards just from Amazon, and I put a link in the, not a link, I put a picture of one um, in the curriculum if, when you purchase the curriculum. It's in the teacher's guide, and you'll see. Um, but basically, the children use small pieces of chalk like this. You want to cut your chalk in half, or you can buy the smaller pieces like I have. And I just keep them in this, I'm just keeping them in this bag for now. And what they do is they practice the letter. So if we're going to practice capital A, they, you know, you would do it first and you would show them. You go up, down, and across. And the reason they want to use small pieces is because the smaller the piece, see how it almost forces me to to hold it properly because I have to hold it so small. Secondly, little hands are supposed to use little tools and big hands are supposed to use big tools. So the smaller the tool, the more it kind of forces them to hold their pencil or in this case chalk correctly. So you want to do it first and then you would have them trace what you did and they're actually getting the feel of how to make these straight lines. Now they are not going to probably be able to trace it straight like I just did. I mean they may be all over the place but it's still just getting them practice using tools and and um, getting the feel of just making straight or even curvy lines when you get to like the letter C or whatever. But for children like this you always want to write it first, model it, and then they will trace after you until they um, are confident and you think that they can actually do it. Okay so then Something else I like to have on hand for fine motor is a little box um, or a tin or a tray with salt or sand. Now mine I made myself and it just has some green sand in it. But you could put salt works just as well or um, you can also um, purchase they make them where they come all pre-made. I just have mine in a little tin and I made it myself. Okay, so what you um, will use this for is a lot of times when we're doing the fine motor skills, so before they get a chance to practice tracing, they are going to trace it on their chalkboard like you did. Then they're going to try to make it in the sand. So they're going to feel the strokes in the sand. And they can use any kind of um, writing utensil you have. And they're just going to try to make those same strokes. So they're going to try to go straight up straight down and across to make that capital A. And it may not look like it necessarily in my sand, but they're feeling the feel of how to make it. And so then of course they love this kind of thing, but they need to be um, monitored obviously with the sand, especially these little ones. So you wanna have something like that on hand. Another thing you wanna have on hand are um, some Play-Doh, because Play-Doh is great for rolling out and using those fine motors. 
uh, skills. I also like to buy the little, for markers, I like to buy the little pipsqueaks because again, small, small tools for small hands. So this kind of forces them to hold, hold it correctly when they're using something small. And then um, I also, for pencil wise, like to get the golf pencils because they're nice and small again and they help them to hold it properly because they are so small and then finally let me show you okay one more so thing. i also have on hand just some fine motor tools you can um if you go on amazon and you just type in fine motor tools you will see the different sets i think this particular set is from learning resources or lakeshore learning one of the, lakeshore learning i think and um, they just come with a couple of different tools and these are awesome for picking up things they have to use um obviously they're fine motor uh, little muscles in their in their fingers to do these different things. This one is for water, and um, we don't use that one too much, but we do use the pinchers a lot, and these kind of ones here. So those are great to have on hand as well. Okay, so this comes with the traceable card. So after they have practiced um, on the chalkboard and on the in the salt, then they they can practice on here. Um, then we have tracing letter pictures, so they're going to trace the apple, and they can color the apple. And then here are big tracing pictures. Okay, and so it says up here to the teacher to provide students with a sand or salt box um, to practice making this capital letter over and over again. Okay, the other letter you will introduce in week one is the letter E. And I'm not going to go through it because it's all the exact same activities that you saw with the letter A, but you get the idea. And again, these are all the instructional activities that the students will be doing as you instruct them on the letter. Okay, so the instructional activities for the number one, which is the number you would um, go ahead and introduce that first week, look like this. So this is the um, number introduction and memory. So you would talk about the number one, and you would say one is the very first number we count. Now zero, we say zero, but zero is nothing. So one is the first actual um, counting number, and you would have the child place an object over the star to show them this is the number one. One, there's one object, okay? Um, and then this is the numeral one. So this is what the number actually looks like or the numeral looks like. It's just a straight line down. And then there's the, um, the what would you say? So this would be the numeral and then this would be um, the representation of the number one. Okay, so there's also um, these uh, fluency cards in here where the child would take one object and they would place it down to represent the number one. So they would say one, one seed, one, one dot, one, one dot, one. Okay, so they're just one-to-one -one correspondence, one. And then they're also seeing the, that the number one is just one line down. Again, there's number identification. They're going to cover up all the number ones. Now, <clears throat> when you do ident identification, then you can talk about how um, sometimes you might see a number one with just these kind of funny little lines on them. There might be a little squiggly line here at the top or a line across the bottom. That's because sometimes computers or people will write the number one just a little bit fancy. And you can tell them that. But then they're going to, of course, cover up all the number ones that they can find on the mat. And you're gonna practice that each day as they're recognizing what the number one looks like. Here's the number one uh, fluency, and we talked about how they, how they do that, and they color in the, the smiley face. It's the same thing as you would do with the alphabet. Here's the number one number value identification. So they are going to Look for all of the 10 frames that have a number one in them. If it has more than one, so this one has one, two, this one has more than one, so we wouldn't cover it up, but this one only has one, so we would cover it up. And they're just gonna go around and cover up the ones, obviously, that have a number one and so on. You can see how they would do that. And then we're getting into the fine motor skills. We're tracing the number one, and this one is a little bit fancy. It's a fancier one and then we're tracing one sock, only one, because one is the first number as we count a value of something. Okay, so those are the instructional activities for number one. 
And then same thing, I won't go through or this video will be really long, but these are the instructional activities for the circle. And it's the same kind of thing. We have some fine motor tracing. We have our um, circle. Now, for, for circles, you want to provide the students with some manipulatives. And let me show you that. Okay, so when you are teaching these shape activities and instructing the students, you want to provide them with some shapes. So these are pattern blocks that I have. Um, they're wooden pattern blocks. And we, were gonna, we are going to use these a lot when we talk about other shapes, but there are no circles in pattern blocks. So for this particular week, I'm going to have the students use these shapes because there is a circle here. And these shapes come from a Melissa and Doug puzzle. And what I would do is I would place the shapes out off to the side. Okay. And then I'm going to say, all right, we are going to talk about circles, circles. And I'm going to say, can you look through these shapes and see if you can find a circle? Now, this is after we have already done the, this is the shape introduction and memory. You do this every day. First thing is the memory practice. So you would say circle, circle has no sides, zero sides. A circle, circle, big and round. What I do is roll around. There are no sides because it's completely round. A side has to be straight. And so there are zero sides and it is round. A circle is like a ball. That's what I tell the kids. Okay, so then they're gonna look through here and try to find the one that looks like a ball that's round. So the, hopefully the child will find the circle and they can just place it, you know, maybe on top of Mr. Circle here or something. Um, so they can place it on the top and then they're going to use manipulatives. And I try to provide the students with manipulatives that are the same shape. And so what I have for this week are, these are caps that I have saved from um, the squeezable baby food uh, containers or like toddlers, you know, they like to eat that squeezable food and these are just the caps from them. So what the kids are going to do is they're just going to take one because they're in the round shape, they're in a circle shape, and they're going to place it on there and they're going to say, a pizza is a circle and they're going to place it on. A donut is a circle. An orange is a circle. Um, so they can do that every day and then you can also talk about well, what other kinds of um, things that you see every day might be in a circle shape. These are all foods. Can you think of other things? Maybe, oh yeah, the wheels on your car, your mom's car or whatever. So um, that is for that practice and those are just some ideas on manipulatives you can use with it. And then also um, getting into, this is one of the fine motor activities of tracing the circle and then this is the circle fluency now this one is pretty cool so i would also provide the children with circles for this activity and again i'm going to use these because they're in a circle shape and they're just going to place it on they're going to say this sh the shape name and the number of sides so a circle has zero sides a circle has zero sides a circle has zero sides a circle has zero sides. And then you can also, um, when they're done with this, they can also go back and say the name of each picture. So they can say a circle, a pizza is a circle. A cookie is a circle. This is a circle man. A donut is a circle. Um, this is target like for playing, um, for uh, bow and arrows and things like that. So a target is a circle. Uh, a wheel is a circle. This is a circle man. A button is a circle and this is a, the um, orange again and then of course they're gonna color in one of the smiley faces when they're done and look at that you can even talk about how smiley faces are in a circle shape okay so again some more instructional activities you've got your shape identification and so on again in, in, in later units you're gonna want to provide them with pattern blocks because the pattern blocks have all the other different shapes that the kids are going to use. But for this particular week, um, it's circles. So you want to provide them with many opportunities to find different circles. And then really quick for the first week, you're going to be doing the color red. And again, it's the same kind of thing. So I'm not going to go through it too much, but of course you want to use your memory page every day. First thing 
and then you're going to do these different activities as your instruction with the children. So follow along on these activities. Provide them with lots of um, manipulatives that are red, but also some that are like mixed up. So you could even give them the cards that I've been showing you and have them find all of the red objects while they're doing, you know, one or two of these activities. So like for this particular activity, um, as they're matching them up, you can give them things that are not red and they have to find the ones that are red as they're saying. A strawberry is red and then they have to find the red object to put into the circle. A crab is red, okay? So just like, just like that. And of course we've got our um, color identification where they were gonna cover up the ones that are red and our color fluency. And then this one is just coloring red. You would need a red um, marker or a red, if you don't, if you don't laminate it, then you would just use, you know, crayons and things like that. This one is for fine motor. So I am going to go on now to the activity centers. And before I go on to the activity centers, I did want to show you, these are bigger puzzle pieces that have some different shapes that you could use for a student who, um, is really really young so if they're an early two you might want to use the ones with these little knobs and they can just practice finding the circle in there and then placing it on their mat and then doing the activity so um, these ones also come from a Melissa and Doug puzzle but it's a it's a bigger puzzle I did forget to show you there are some fine motor tracing cards um, provided in the instructional activities that the kids can use to practice straight lines and some curvy lines as well all right, let's get into these activity centers or this video is gonna be really long. So this first activity center is the Alphabet Activity Center for this week and it is called Hamburger Match It. And so what the kids are going to do is they are going to, there's a couple different ways you can play it. You can play it where they have to match capital and lowercase. So what they would do is they would take the capital letter and let's just use E since I've already shown you a lot of A things because you are practicing E this week as well. Um, I always teach the vowels first. So the first couple of weeks are gonna be the vowels and then you go on to the consonants. All right, so what they have to do then is they pla you place the capital E hamburger on one side and then they have to go through the french fries and they have to find the lowercase e. Okay, so and they, they kind of use different fonts and then they have to place them all on the other side as they find all of the ones that look like E, lowercase e. So it's just an upper and lowercase match. And then you can also play it with A. So once they've found all the E's, then you mix them back up again, and you can play it with capital A. And I would mix them up and have them find all the lowercase A's and so on. The other way to play this game, sorry, honey, you need to go stand up here, okay? The other way to play this activity center is to either practice the sounds for A or the sounds for E. So you would find the card that has capitals on it. And then the kids are going to look through their cards and mat match them up. Now mine are in order, so I have all of the E ones in order, but you would mix them up. And um, so E says eh, eh. Exercise, does exercise sound like eh? And they would have to place it on their mat. Elephant, eh, eh, elephant. That one matches. Egg, eh, eh, egg, that one matches. Mine are all in order, by the way, they're all gonna match. And then eh, eh, elbow, elbow matches. Okay, and you can do the same thing for letter A. So they're gonna match up the A's. So we have ax, astronaut, apple, and alligator. All right, let's go on. Okay, this next one is a fine motor activity center. And um, by the way, these activity centers all come with a direction card that looks like this, and I print them on label paper, and then I put a label on my bags as I, um, just kind of as a label, and it's got all the directions there for me, and it labels my bag of what it is. All right, so what you're gonna do with this one is you're gonna pick which, which um, card you wanna work on for the day. So we have E, A, or a circle. And today we're gonna to practice circle, just for the purposes of this video. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to provide the children with either some tweezers, like I have here, or with one of the fine motor tools, like this one or this one. And then they're gonna use those to pick up objects and place it on their mat in the different circles. And the same thing would happen if you decided to choose A, they would have to place the objects 
in there and they're practicing their fine motor skills. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Play-Doh for this and I would have the kids roll out little Play-Doh balls because that really practices their fine motor skills. So I'm gonna roll out just a couple of them here to show you what I mean. And then using one of the tools, maybe that you wanna have them use the pinchers, they have to pick up the ball and place it on the mat like so or this one this one is a a favorite of my son's my uh six-year-old actually used to love using this and just picking them up and placing them until they have filled it up and again you can use any manipulative you have you don't have to use the um play-doh but i'm just showing you an example of what you could use on the mat Okay, so this is another fine motor activity center, and this is called Snap Cube Build It. And in um, units, subsequent units from this, the kids are going to actually also be doing um, pattern block build it. So you want to have some snap cubes and some pattern blocks on hand to, for these activities. And what they're going to do is they're going to build whatever letter. And so um, this week, of course, we have letter A, letter E, and the number one. So um, I'm just going to show you letter E because I already have it built. So these are our snap cubes, and I'll show you. They're just going to take their snap cubes and they're going to build the letter exactly how it is here. I counted to make sure I had the same amount, but you know, little kids may not be, be able to do that. But they can at least try to make it. They're using their fine motor skills. These are definitely something that makes them use the tips of their fingers. And so I, I love these for fine motor, but they're also, not only are they practicing fine motor, they are practicing the letter. So they're seeing that elephant um, goes with E. They're seeing what an E looks like, how it has the three lines. It has a big tall line here. And they're also practicing that fine motor. So love these, love building with, um, with these. And so, yeah, so we have those. Let me show you the next one. This next activity center is the color activity center. So this one, they are gonna be matching red pieces. So you are going to get cards that look like this. Just different pictures of red objects. And then you will get cards that look like this. And the kids have to sort them. So these, I'm gonna put over here. Now this is a, sorting is an amazing, wonderful skill because it, it is a precursor to all of the hard math skills that the kids need to know as they get older. And so sorting, you're definitely gonna see a lot of sorting in this curriculum. So what you can do, you can make it easy and just give the kids, um, like if you're working with a two year old, or for example, my son who has special needs, I would just give him one uh, map. But if you're working with a student who you think could um, maybe a three-year-old who's getting close to four who could maybe do two mats at a time and then what they would do is they take the, pick, the cards and they just sort them. So they're going to put um, all of the red peppers over here and all the red hearts over here. Um, but again, you could just give them one card if you think that they're too little and just have them kind of go through the cards and say, now these are all red objects, but right now we're only gonna look for the red hearts. That's an apple, so we're not gonna put that one on there. But there's a red heart, there's a red heart button. And here's another red heart. So they're gonna go through and just find all of the red hearts. And I don't remember how many I put of each one. Okay, so I put four pictures of each one. And they're gonna cover up their map. Now you can extend this activity by saying, okay, now I'm gonna give you some real objects and I want you to go through them and find just the red ones. And so here I just brought out my pattern blocks for an example. And I'm gonna lay some out and then have the child, okay, find just the red block. And then they're gonna pick up just the red blocks and they can just kind of stack them up on their mat or however you wanna have them do it. Um, but that is just a way to extend the learning about color. Okay guys, this next activity center I think is my favorite one for, um, this week and it is feed mr circle so since we were learning about circles this week the activity center has this is mr circle <laughs> and what you want to do as the teacher with mr circle is you want to attach him to some kind of a bin or a um even a plastic uh cup something like that so i'm going to attach my mr circle to this little red bin here just what i do is i keep my activities in the bag and then when we're ready to do it I just pull out a, a cup real quick and attach it with some tape so that's what I'm going to do today and I try to 
um, just use as little tape as I have to and then it comes right off because I have laminated Mr. Circle here. Alright so I just put a couple of pieces of tape on him to make him stand up and it looks better in person but it's hard to see there on the video but he stands up and then what the kids are going to do is they're going to feed him but they're only going to feed him the oops I lost a piece. The um, pictures that are in, or the, the food that is in a circle shape because he's Mr. Circle and he only likes to eat things that are in a circle shape. And so I'm going to hold him like this, but for the kids, for the purposes, normally he would be sitting there and then the kids would feed him. And he looks just fine to me, but it's a weird angle on the video. So I'm going to hold him like this. And what they're going to do is they're going to look, nacho chips are in a triangle, so they're not going to feed him that. And this cheese is in a square, so I'm not going to feed him that. But he does like pizza because this one, this piece of pizza is in a circle. So they're going to feed him that. The chocolate bar is not in a circle, so we're not going to feed him that. You get the idea. We're going to feed him the donut. Nope. Sandwich, nope. Cookie, yes. Orange, yes. This pizza is in a triangle, so no. The banana, no. And then I dropped a piece. I think it was... Um, a cracker or something but you get the idea so they're just going to feed him the the food that is in a circle shape i just absolutely love this activity now you could extend this activity if you have play food um you could extend it that way and have them feed the play food if you have some different shapes of that as well okay and so i only have two more activities to show you this one is dough build it and so what the kids are going to do it's a fine motor activity and they're going to practice building a capital a lowercase a capital e lowercase e the number one and a circle so i'm going to just show you number one and says use dough to build a number then to make the number in a salt or sand box so i'm going to go ahead and get my dough out you want the kids to be able to roll it out into the number one and again, Play-Doh is so perfect for fine motor because they really have to use their fingers. And all of these fine motor activities are preparing them for a life of writing. And so that is what we have to remember as they're doing these. Okay, so there we go. I have built my number one. Um, and then after they build their number one with their Play-Doh, you could also, okay, so you could extend this activity. And you could provide them, I was just thinking, this is a box of numbers, again, from a puzzle. And you could have them look through there and see if they could find the number one. So here, I found my number one. And have them place it, whoop, place it on their mat. I messed up my, my Play-Doh. Okay, place it on their mat after they look through their numbers and they remember what a number one looks like. And again, you can remind them, sometimes the number one is just a stick. And sometimes people like to make it fancy and add a little, a little bit maybe to the top or to the bottom, but it's still a number one. And then um, to extend it even further, again, you could have them practice making a number one on their little chalkboard or on their salt or sandbox. Um, so all those kinds of things. And then you could have them practice counting out one. So you can say, okay, I'm going to give you some objects here. These are pom-poms. And in fact, for this week, they're perfect because they're in a circle shape. So you could say, these are pom-poms in a circle shape. Now my pom-poms are attached to magnets and we use these for lots of things. But you could say, um, these are circle pom-poms, and what we're going to do is we're going to place them on our mat, but we're only going to count to the number that's on our mat. So this week we're practicing the number one. We're only going to count to the number one. And you can have them use a fine motor tool, like maybe the pinchers. And I call them the pinchers. These are, what are they? They're like chopsticks or something. Tweezers. <laughs> um, so you're going to have them, you know, see if they can tweeze one of them, put it on and say, okay, there's one. Do we need to get another one? Nope, because that would be more than one. So we're only going to count out one to this week. And then maybe next week when we work on number two, you could have them, you know, obviously do two and so on. But there you go. So, um, all right, one more activity and then we are finished and I'm done showing you all of the activities for week one of the hands-on to learn preschool curriculum. Okay, here we go. Okay, so as we get into this, again, this curriculum is really great for kids with special needs, but um, I especially um, expect to use it with my kids that do not have special needs. So, um, it, you know, it's not just particularly 
for um, children with special needs. It's for all children who are um, preschool age, you know, that two and three year old stage. And the fun thing is that I'm gonna be able to use this now with three of my kids because I have three of them that are under three years old. So I'm excited about that. And um, if you guys have older students and you're watching this, I have lots of other curriculum for older kids because I have older kids as well. Um, and so I would love for you to check out those videos and go back and look at that kind of stuff as well if you're interested. But let's get into this last activity. So this is number one, sorted. And there are two ways to play. So um, there's a mat that looks like this and there is a mat that looks like this. So this mat here is going to be practicing the value of number one, and then this one is going to be practicing the digit. So let's start with the digit. So this mat goes with the digit cards. So they're all the cards that have the actual numbers on them. And then um, the other side of the mat is gonna go with the value cards or the 10 frame cards. So right now we're gonna use the digit cards and we're gonna sort them. And so I have this side of the mat is gonna be anything that is a number one, and this one is gonna be not a number one. So the kids are gonna take the card and look at it. Is this a number one? Nope, this is a number seven. And that's kind of tricky because sometimes that can look like a one. It can look like a fancy one, but that's not. That's a number seven. This is a number one, so it's gonna go over here. This is a number one, and I particularly used ones that maybe looked a little differently. So the kids are getting exposed to different ways that the number one might look. This is a number nine, so it's gonna go over here. Here's a number one. Here's a number seven again. Again, I made it a little bit more difficult for the kids. Um, here's number one. Number three, not number one. Six is not number one. This is a number one and it has the word number one. You get the idea. So they're going to just kind of sort them where they go on the map. And the same thing with the other side, except the other side they're gonna sort by the value of number one. So they're gonna look at the 10 frames and they're going to see like, you can look at that 10 frame and you can see that it has two on it. So that is not a number one. This has one, so that does go in the one column. So you get the idea, they're gonna just sort the 10 frames by how many, the value. That shows a one, so it's gonna go over here. And then this shows a two, so it's gonna go over here. This shows way more than one. It's gonna go over here, that's five. Um, there's three, so that goes over here. This goes over here. One goes over here. You get the idea. So they're not only practicing counting, but they're practicing sorting as well. All right, that's the last activity center for this week. And I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are going to be teaching two and three year olds this year and um, like I said this curriculum is on sale right now for $20 and it's the cheapest it's ever going to be because as I add more things to it the price will rise but you will get everything for free if you or if you purchase right now it's kind of like a pre-purchase you'll get all of what you saw here today and then you'll get everything else that I add to it later on um, okay, so um, then just to really quick wrap up, I'm gonna show you a few other manipulatives we like to use with preschoolers. So I love these little alphabet robots. Here's Q, here's N. You can see this one, oh no, there's L. But you can see they've been trying to kind of make them into robots. So they, there's F. So they're a letter, but then they also can build into a robot. There you go, you can see the letter W, they're starting to. One of my kids was starting to make it into a robot. So, yeah, I, I absolutely love these for preschoolers because they're really big, great for their little hands. Another thing, of course, I love puzzles for preschoolers. So these are um, al alphabet puzzle pieces from Melissa and Doug Puzzles. This is like three puzzles put together, uh, pieces put together. I, or I have a couple of them, yeah. Um, then, Another one that I love to have on hand for little hands are the alphabet bean bags. And they do come in a little bag, but I took mine out of the bag and I put them in here because I wanted them in order for just different activities that we do. It's just easier to find them in, in order. But um, yeah, so alphabet bean bags, so fun. You can throw them the letter, they can say the sound, say the name, so many activities you can do with those. You can build words. Um, just, yeah, there's just a plethora of 
different manipulatives we like to have on hand. Again, these are our numbers um, from a puzzle. I don't know. I have other things sitting here around me, but I keep forgetting what I've shown you when I haven't. I will show you more in, in videos going on throughout the school year of what we're doing and the activities and what manipulatives we're using. But I thank you so much for watching. I will leave a link below to this curriculum. Um,